Hey everyone, welcome in. This is Julie Max from the Main Stamper and I am here for a specialty card class tonight. This one is gonna be so awesome. I am going to be sharing with you my Joyfold Love Cats card. Check out how sweet is this, right? So this is called a Joyfold card because it um, kind of hinges on one end. You can't really see it from the back, but it hinges uh, onto our uh, insert here. And then it folds across the front and it catches on my little planter here. If I line it up right, it's kind of hard to do it backwards, but here it is. This little sweet kitty on the fence has been very popular this week. In fact, we, um, we made this card during my in-person card class on Saturday. So monthly, I have a gathering of wonderful crafters that come and stamp with me in my home. And this was one of four of the cards that we made. And it was a really big hit. And a lot of people were asking me, what are the dimensions? How did you make it? What did you use? And I'm here to share all the dirt. So I want to um, welcome all of you that are new. Hi Rhonda, hi Jess, I'm so excited that you guys are here. Um, I may have some new people checking me out tonight to see what it is all about here on a Monday at eight o'clock with the main stamper. So normally I come on and I do three cards and I talk about a specific stamp in a bundle and I give offers, um, special ordering offers during the week so that if you order with me, I send you special gifts and I do have special gifts this week, but because I'm only doing one card, uh, my gifts are completely different. I'm not actually sending out card kits this week. I'm actually sending out some designer paper and an embellishment. So there's a whole new offer on the table for this week. It is pretty exciting too. But let's get over to my workspace because we're gonna talk about this amazing Love Cats card. Now make sure you're saying hi as you jump on. I'd love to know um, where you're watching from if you're new. This is always exciting to meet new people. So as mentioned, we are using the Love Cats stamp set. And we have three cute, adorable, I mean like, oh my goodness, so cute, little kitties, right? Three kitty images, three stamps. This is a red rubber stamp. Um, I don't even have them all mounted yet, but this is um, what they look like. I do have a couple of them mounted. We are gonna use some of them today. This comes out of the Stampin' Up! mini catalog. It is gonna be on page 13. You can look at the catalog online. If you don't have a copy of any of the Stampin' Up! catalogs and you're interested, please let me know. You can um, make a comment here on this video or you can private message me. And of course it is celebration. Celebration's going on until the end of February. So when you spend $50, you also get to pick out a freebie um, in this little brochure. And that's like awesome because who, who doesn't want free stuff, right? I love the free stuff. All right, so Love Cat's card. We're going to move right into this and we're going to talk a little bit about the card base because this is a little different, right? And so once again, this is how it opens up. Oh, I love that the cat you can see on the back side, right? The back side of the wall. You see kitty on front and the back. I mean, this is just a fun card. Now, if you're not into cats, there could be other things that may perch on a wall. You could think about putting a bird up here um, and maybe a little mouse. Squirrel would be adorable. Like you can think of different critters that you could maybe um, put on your little wall. And of course, you don't have to have a, an animal on your wall either. This is a great idea just to use this joyful um, technique. So you're going to be learning all about that. Now we're going to start out with, this is gray granite cardstock, and this is an eight and a half by 11. I'm holding it this way so you can see it in my video. So the eight and a half inch side is this side right here. 11 inches is this way. So I'm just going to, I'm going to show you start to finish how to cut the paper for this card. So we're going to start with the eight and a half inch side and we're gonna to go to four and a quarter. So make sure you can see four and a quarter for me is right here. Now, normally this is kind of an odd thing, right? Normally when we're making our A2, A2 size cards, we're going to five and a half when we're cutting this in half because we want to use um, a one sheet of cardstock for two cards. This, it feels funny to go to four and a quarter, but you're going to four and a quarter. So four and a quarter. And you're gonna look at this and go, wow, this is my card base. This just seems so strange. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna um, score this at five and a half. So we're putting it in the, the long way here. Now we're gonna score it at five and a half. And every time I do this, I panic too, because I'm thinking this can't possibly be correct. This can't possibly be correct, but it actually is. And when we get all done, this is what we've got. So here is the, the bones of our card right here, right? So you've got this piece is what you're looking at right here. So that should make sense to you. And if not, you can, if you're watching this later on, you can pause and, um, you know, stop this video and do some, do some of the cutting and then start it back up again. But we're gonna go ahead and burnish that crease. 
and we're gonna set this aside for a second and we're gonna bring in the remainder of our paper. Now I need for my brick wall, I need a two and a half inch um, piece. And I'm gonna continue to use the eight inch side here. I'm sorry, it is eight and a half, eight and a half inch side here. So I'm gonna do two and a half by, this is eight and a half. I don't want it to be eight and a half. I want it to be eight inches. So I'm going to cut off half an inch. I gotta do the math here in my head properly, yes. I want this to be eight inches, I'm cutting off a half an inch. So now I should, if I did this correctly, sometimes you guys, you guys follow me, sometimes math is hard for me, but this is now an eight inch piece of paper by two and a half, and you still have all of this left over. So you could actually make another, um, you could make another one of these if you wanted to make more than one card. I'm just gonna set that aside because we really don't need it. Now this piece, which is our joy fold piece is eight inches. We're gonna score it in half at four inches. So I'm just bringing in my score here. And then this is exactly in half. And if it's not exactly in half, the reality is it's okay. I'm trying to move my paper trimmer aside without dropping it somewhere. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and burnish this up really good too with the bone folder. So here are the bones of the card right here. This is going to be our brick wall. This is going to come this way eventually, right? So you can kind of see how this is starting to come together. It's making maybe a little bit more sense. Now let's talk about the embossing here for our bricks because there is a little bit of method to the madness for that as well. And I'm actually gonna bring in my die cutting machine and I'm gonna emboss this real quick with the brick and mortar 3D embossing folder. Now this is a six inch embossing folder. So I do have to use my big machine. And I'm gonna go ahead and line up. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna line up my paper. So I'm gonna line it up so that I'm stopping. I've got my crease here really nicely, right? I'm gonna stop my embossing just past my crease, just a little bit past it. And what I'm trying to focus on right here is making sure that my gray paper, which is probably hard to see in here, is, is kind of straight with the bricks, but I'm leaving a whole bunch of it out on the other end. So I've got like a tail sticking out here, if you will. And I'm gonna make sure the um, embossing folder goes in with the crease first. And because this is one of those thick 3D embossing folders, I'm using plate number four on top. And I'm gonna kind of catch it here on the other end because it'll be loud and poppy if I don't. It's just the way the embossing folder sits in the machine. All right, so once we've got that all done, set those things aside, and you can see that we have some bricks on one side and the other side is smooth. And the reason I'm not embossing the entire thing is because this part right here is going to get tucked under. Actually, I'll show you, I kind of have a, a half one done here. So this is the brick and this is the smooth. And this is gonna go into the card base like this. So if this was really bumpy with the brick embossing, it wouldn't lay as flat here when I put it together. And that's why I only emboss half of it. So that's the method to my madness for the embossing folder. Now, if you don't have a brick style embossing folder, you could probably get away with using um, some scoring and you could get creative and score some lines into your cardstock. I'm just gonna bring some Oh, this is the gray. You know what? I didn't grab out the gray granite. This is basic gray, which we're going to be using later on. And, um, oh, that's kind of cool though. I like happy accidents. This is, this is really interesting. Um, so I'm on, on my original card, which I'm going to show you here again. I use gray granite ink on gray granite cardstock and it's, it's, um, it's more subtle. Let's go with it's more subtle. This one is like, wow, check that out, right? So here's my brick for this one. Actually, it's, it's gonna need to go this way. I'm gonna put it in this way. So here's my brick. So this, this is kind of cool though, because you know, sometimes when you do something a little bit differently, it's, it's all good, right? All right, I'm gonna put a little bit more dark on the... All right, we're gonna see. This is always fun. I love to do, if you follow me, I love color swapping. And on Wednesday, over on my group, Positive Paper Crafters, we actually, I'm gonna actually do a color swap for this exact card. I'm gonna change out some colors and we're gonna see which one we like better. So I just darkened that down a little bit and move this aside because it's just kind of messy and uh, nasty looking. Let's talk about some of the other pieces that are gonna go into this card. So I'm gonna give you measurements as promised. And if you're on my newsletter, if you subscribe to my email newsletter on Thursday when my weekly newsletter goes out, I am going to be offering a written PDF 
uh, card recipe tutorial. So if you are interested in signing up for my newsletter, uh, let me know and I can help you to get that done. Meanwhile, this piece right here, these two pieces, we have Sweet Sorbet. This is four by five and a quarter. So this is, if this was just the front of an A2 size card, this would be your first layer, four by five and a quarter, okay? This next piece that we're gonna layer together, this is white and it is, I'm reading my directions over here, three and three quarters by five. Okay, so if you're keeping track at home, if you're taking notes, the white one is three and three quarters by five. So it's just the next um, quarter inch size down so that we can mat it and layer. I love mats and layers, like they're my favorite things. Now let's talk about the front pieces right here. This piece of Sweet Sorbet is two and three quarters by four and the designer series paper is two and a half by three and three quarters. So again, we're just going to mat these two together, just like this, and I like to use the green glue. And this is gonna go on the front of our card right here on this flap, so this is the front. And this just goes on here nice and flat. So a lot of this is just kind of layering things down. And we had a great time make, uh, like I said, we had such a great time with this card in class. This was the step that I said, everybody wait, don't continue onward because I, I want you to put this piece together properly. So this is kind of the trickier, the hinging part. But before we go on, I just wanna do a quick commercial break for my special for the week. So I am offering the sweetest special ever the sweetest special ever this week. Instead of card kits with your qualifying order, I'm offering designer series paper. These are six by six sheets. You're gonna get 24 sheets from the Dandy Designs Celebration Paper. So these are some amazing papers. I have been using these a lot. And then you're also gonna get 24 sheets of the Flowers and More Host Designer Series Paper. And these have some really fun, bright, bold patterns in them. So you're getting 48 sheets of six by six paper from me. And you're also going to get a free embellishment, a mystery, I'm calling it a mystery embellishment, because I'm gonna package these up and I'm going to send them in your little package that I'm putting in the mail for you so that when you get them, it's like a super surprise and it looks pretty, right? Now you can very creatively take this apart, this little package that I'm putting together and you can reuse some of this uh, paper and the little elements that I've got on here. This is not paper from your paper pack. I want you to know that I'm not using your paper to wrap up an embellishment for you. I have lots of extra paper. So I'm using this paper, it comes from this paper pack, right? Um, but I'm gonna also use other papers. So your yours could be purple, red, present it could be blue there's all kinds of things um, and this is my ordering special this week with my host code um, just ordering $50 is also going to get you a celebration item as well as your products and your papers so let's talk about this paper that I just used um, so this one is a card that I made with that paper and another one that I made with the paper and the paper so I'm just going to show you some examples of cards I've been using up this paper. I've been using it quite a bit. Um, this was my little gnome class. I've got all of these classes um, that I've been doing weekly. This one, I kind of did a different little take on the, the specialty card, um, but that's a lot of them from the Dandy Designs paper. And then I also use the um, flowers and more. So again, you're gonna see all of the designer series paper on here and ways that you can use your designer series paper to create some really awesome cards. Now I have quite a few of these on Pinterest as well. They are also on my blog. So if you're interested in checking them out a little bit closer, oh, we use the floating eclipse technique on that one. This one might be my favorite. It's really bold and fun. And then on these gnome cards, I use the paper here and here. So you can see that this paper is really versatile. It goes with so many different, I mean, you can use it so many different ways. So that's awesome, fun paper. And I wanted to talk about the paper special that I have going on. If you have any questions on that please let me know so let's go back to our card now this is the part where I want you to put this together before you put this on this part of your card so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to open this up and I'm gonna put my adhesive right here just like so so this is the front which I have already sponged and then this is where we're at and I'm gonna line this up right here and I'm going to just put, my, put this right down over top of my adhesive and just kind of see where it is and I can wiggle it around a little bit if I need to, which I might need to shift it slightly down. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to line up this gray piece right here so that it just covers the white edge but leaves this nice red all the way across. And then of course on the back, 
I can push this down a little bit. This is gonna be adhered here. And now I can center this on my card right here. So let's do that next. So we're gonna use lots of glue here and get that put down right here. Now I'm centering this piece on the inside of my card. And if I've done everything nicely centered, if I've done everything nicely centered, let's go with that first. I should still have the red coming all the way through here, right? And when I open it up, so you can see the red all the way across, and then this gray is supposed to meet up with, of course, there's never every, you know, perfectly perfect world, right? The gray is supposed to cover up just the end of the designer series paper. And now we have our joy fold right there. So the back of the card is completely flat and this little um, brick is tucked into, if you will, it's tucked into this. And then of course our closing mechanism, mechanism is always gonna be something decorative and creative on the front that is popped up just a little bit so that we can tuck it in when we, uh, we may very carefully close it over. I forgot to trim this, so this is something that I'm gonna do right now really quickly. Um, on this card, you can see that I took out a couple of bricks for interest. So all I did was um, came in with my paper snips and I'm not gonna go too crazy. I'm just gonna take out a couple of bricks here, maybe one, and just kind of rounding them a little bit. Mm, we might just do one this time. It depends on where your bricks are gonna form. This is a long brick, and I don't wanna take out this entire brick. Um, now, now, Tabitha in class, she got very creative, and she actually took out a whole bunch of bricks down the side. The only time you see it is when it's in the open position. So she took out quite a few bricks here and it was really a really awesome little technique that she did. So of course you don't have to cut any of the bricks out if you don't want to, but it is kind of interesting um, when you do something like that with your card. All right, let's talk about this kitty cat because of course kitty cat is the star of the show, right? And for cat, we are bringing in Stamparatus and Oh, I just found a die. All right, I think my die came off of the magnet sheet. Okay, yes, there's lots of magnets with the Stamparatus, right? These are very strong magnets. There are two on the back and you don't want them to, to touch each other ever, ever. Let me see which way Kitty's going here. All right, we're gonna put in some paper and we're going to use the Stamparatus to make a really dark kitty cat. Uh, this foam that comes with it is for your photopolymers. This is a red rubber. The red rubber stamps are thicker, so you don't um, necessarily need the foam for that. I'm just looking for something to put underneath my, my open plate here. So let's bring in some memento ink. This is a nice black ink. And we're gonna ink up the kitty, and I'm gonna show you why the Stamparatus, or a Misty, if you have a Misty, why this is super important for this card. So I put a whole bunch, right? A whole bunch of black ink on here. Hopefully you can see this, right? Okay, black ink. We're gonna come across here, and we're gonna just press this down. And we're gonna try to get as much ink on this white paper as we can. And I'm gonna show you that this cat is not super black yet. Like there are white, you can see white cardstock through a little bit through the black here. So we're gonna come in again. And the, and the best part about this is that because the magnets are here holding the paper in place, um, however many times I need to do this inking, which is about three, if you want a really nice dark image, you can actually continue to stamp this and press it down. And you don't have to worry about lining it up. Now, this is an awesomely black cat. I don't know if you can see the difference here, but look at how awesome this cat is now. So let me set this aside and we're gonna talk a little bit about fussy cutting because there are no dies. This is just a stamp set and everyone was like, wow, is this really hard to fussy cut? Um, no, not really. You're gonna start here wherever you like. I like to start at the tail and you're just gonna use your paper snips or your very good scissors. Um, and this little line right here and this little line right here by his paw, this is meant to be a line where he's kind of sitting somewhere. Uh, but we don't need those lines because we're cutting him right out. There was a couple girls in class that left those little lines on there because they thought they were part of the cat. And I was looking at him and I was like, why do you have that on your cat? I couldn't figure out what those lines were, to be honest with you, uh, out of context. I couldn't figure out what those lines even were. I'm just gonna cut this away so it's out of my way. So we're just kind of going down and around Puss Cat here. It doesn't take too long. Now, if you have a really nice pair of scissors, this is so much easier. I love my paper snips here by Stampin' Up. Uh, Michelle had asked me if I would help her with her whiskers and she handed me her cat 
and she handed me her scissors and they were small similar to these and I was like oh my gosh they were heavy and I couldn't I couldn't maneuver them as well as I do my own paper snips so I said nope let me grab out my paper snips and then I said you try my paper snips Michelle and you tell me how awesome these are and she was really impressed now I know that Michelle has paper snips on her wish list because she really wants to get these they were actually out of stock for a bit so we're just zooming around here getting our little cat all nice and cut out now I haven't done his whiskers yet we're gonna come back up and do that last because that is kind of the trickiest trickiest spot here to, to do I'm gonna try to get his tail down and around here I got to come back through here and and get his tail okay so here is most of it fussy cut now is there a little bit of white on there sure but that's okay too now for the whiskers this was my trick to do is just to kind of go in and then in kind of at a triangle angle oh I think I just cut his whisker off <laughs> oh that was great this is live you know kitty cat's now gonna have two whiskers I went in at an angle and um, I'll trim up here and kind of just snipped away poor kitty cat he lost a whisker in this, this there was really no harming of cats in this little demonstration here but there is a pot there is a way right to get these little whiskers and then you can kind of peel back the white parts not the black parts and kind of snip them from the back too now if this is like oh my goodness way too much way too much fussy cutting you can simply take um, some markers and just kind of fill in a little bit but I'm just letting you know that if you take some some small and simple actions you can actually cut poor little cat's got two whiskers now but he does still have two whiskers so I'm okay with that but here's my little guy he's so cute now let's remember that the back of the cat we stamped him on white paper right so he is white on the back if we put him on our fence which we're gonna put him we're gonna layer him right here right I don't have him glued on yet but this is what he's gonna look like if we flip it open he's gonna be a white cat on the back and we really want the continuity of a black cat so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna bring in a black marker I happen to be using the dark black stamp and blend and this is just really quick to color and we're just gonna give him some nice color on the back here now the um the only thing I'm gonna caution and I cautioned all my girls about too is don't uh, don't get too crazy with the ink over his eyes I probably just did but maybe that's a good thing um, because this um, will bleed through oh it didn't that's perfect it did not bleed through his eyes are still white now if you're not happy with the black ink uh, or the white ink if you're not happy with your white showing where you fussy cut you can add a little bit of black on here and take care of some of that too so there we go now oh, I left a little bit of white right here and here now what I did with my very first sample that I was making because I always make one in my craft room and kind of perfect it a little bit so I kind of know what I'm trying to teach um, I just have a white like a, a jelly roll pen I think these are called jelly roll pens right um, just a white little pen and if needed you can go back in and touch his eyes up I actually did that on this cat on my original cat um, the black bled through so I went back in with my white pen and touched up his eyes and it, he was perfectly fine I didn't you couldn't hardly tell that he uh, he had any issues now when you put your cat on the wall I want you to do this in the open card position just like this because if you try to glue your cat on the wall when your card is like this there is a possibility that you're going to have a little bit too much glue and you're going to actually glue this flap closed so we're going to leave this open and we're going to bring come in with our glue and we're going to do his tail because his tail sticks down and we're going to do just the top the top edge of his body here and the top edge of his paw so you can kind of see here hopefully you can see I have just a little bit of glue on here and we're gonna put him right on the fence right at the top and we're gonna pop him on there and there he is on top of the fence and there he is you can see him from the back I just think that is so cute I love that right so here's here's the beginnings of our card now of course he um, he does need some things to help hold him close otherwise it's just going to keep popping open so let's talk about some of the other things that I used for this card and we will bring in some scraps of different things here because we have like a little planter we have a little sentiment and I actually have different stamp sets that I used for this too 
So here we go. We're going to bring in plentiful plants and we're going to bring in the dyes that go with it. These dyes happen to be called perfect plants. So I did these in some nice core, um, some colors that would go really well with what I had going on already. So there are a couple of ferny stamps. So I've got mint macaron, ink, and paper. And I'm going to do the smaller one here. And these are distinctive stamps. These are photopolymers, so you can already see that they're a little bit different. They're the see-through clear stamps. So I'm going to do the mint on mint. I love tone on tone. Uh, we're going to do garden green on garden green for this piece. And don't forget, all of these are just scraps. I will, in the card recipe though, I'm going to actually tell you how big of a scrap you actually need. But if you're just using different plants and things at home, plant stamps and what have you, and then I've got a small piece here in basic gray for my little planter pot. And these, uh, I think I had started to say, these are distinctive stamps by Stampin' Up, so they're a little bit different. They actually don't cover full ink, and that's on purpose. So I'm going to lift this up a little bit so you can kind of see. Um, and everyone that, that stamped this in my class on Saturday was like, why is, why is the pot look, is it supposed to look like this? And I said, yes, these are supposed to be kind of shadowy. And almost, they almost have the appearance that maybe you stamped on a napkin or something with texture because there's like a little bit of texture and the ink doesn't fully come across um, everywhere. So it's a, they are different, but they are really kind of cool effect. Now for the sentiment, this did come from the Love Cat stamp set. I'm going to use Sweet Sorbet ink. And this says, I love hanging out with you. And I'm just going to stamp that really quickly. And I would love to know if you guys prefer red rubber or photopolymer stamps because we had a little bit of that discussion. Um, and I really like the red rubber. Of course, the photopolymer are nice for two step stamping and all of that good stuff. So I just bringing in my little punch here. This is a one and a half inch circle punch just to get this um, punched out for my sentiment. Now I'm not going to die cut these because um, I don't want to take up the time die cutting. So I actually did earlier kind of die cut some of these different images and things so that I'd have them to put my cart together more quickly for you. These give it a whirl dies. This is another set of dies and I play with a lot of different products when I create some of my cards because I don't want to just use one stamp set and one die and one punch. I like to use lots of things and it just makes it way more fun. So this little circle right here came from the give it a whirl dies right here and we use this tiny little heart to get these little hearts for our card as well. So I did use this die set in case you're at home and you're like, oh my gosh, I have that too. So I die cut all of these already. We're gonna just pretend magic, right? And we're gonna talk about how this all goes together. So here's my little planter parts. Here is my sentiment parts. Now when you die cut this, the circle comes out. And the one that I punched is a little bit smaller than the red. So we're actually gonna use both of those when we put our card together. And I did these little hearts and they're so cute. They have little tiny stitching on the outside. So does this circle. So you're getting that continuity of like stitching here, stitching here, and that kind of helps to bring the card together as well, which is really nice. I also did a cat earlier too, just in case I was, wasn't feeling confident in my fussy cutting. This guy's whiskers are perfect. So Mr. Whiskers here, um, he's got really nice whiskers, but I do have another cat and I'll probably put him on a card later on. So let's talk about this planter and how we all put this together and all of the good things. So on my card, I have to keep making sure you guys can see it because I play with stuff and I, I'm not focusing on the camera, I'm focusing on my craft space. Um, we've got, again, the two different color greens. Really love these greens. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna just glue down this mint one first. I'm just putting a little bit of glue here on there uh, on, the, on the greens and I'm gonna just bring my, my planter up, a little pot up over top of it. And I'm gonna do the same thing here and just kind of catch some glue on here on the bottom. And then I'm going to layer this one over top here so that it's all just one piece together before I put it on my card. Now, of course, this is glue, so it may take a second or three or five to set, but this is what the little plant looks like. Isn't that adorable? Really love it. Now, when we put this on our card, there is something to keep in mind. You can't just put it anywhere, okay? First of all, we do definitely need dimensionals. So let me bring in those, snag out some of my dimensionals here. I think I'll have enough here. And, oh, there's one more, there's one more little thing that I gotta show you at the end. 
some of the girls, they get so clever during class and they do something and then everyone's like, ah, we want to do that too. It's a lot of fun when you stamp with friends. So we're going to go ahead and put dimensionals on the back of this, but we're going to keep them to the, as we're looking at it, it's going to be toward the left side middle to left. We want them over. We don't want them centered. We don't want them too far to the right. Did I do that the wrong way? I totally did. Mm -hmm. Yes, as I talk out loud. Okay, we're going to try to get this one off of here. I think that'll be okay. All right, we want them the left side, the left side right here. It can be difficult because you're flipping it back and forth. You want them on this side right here because on your card, when you put it down, you have to be able to tuck this in. And if your dimensionals are too far over, you're not gonna be able to close this flat. So basically, when you're getting ready to put this planter on, you're actually doing it while your card is in the closed position. So let me grab these little backings off of here real quick. And we will put this down. So again, I'm going to hold this closed. I'm going to kind of feel where my dimensionals are. I want my planter to actually hit the bottom of my designer paper too. And we're going to come right about here. Now, fortunately, you also have to keep in mind, right? You don't want your plant, your, your greens to go off your card. Otherwise it might not fit in the envelope. But as long as you have these things in mind, so when it opens and you just have to bend it slightly to close it, but now it will stay closed from that little planter on there. Isn't that the cutest? All right, we're gonna put this on here and then we're gonna do the little hearts. I'm gonna show you a variation that I learned from one of my stampers. Oh, I just love when my stampers teach me things too. So we're gonna put this down here. We had a lot of fun placing this little circle around or over top of um, the kitty cat's hand. Now, if you put the kitty cat on last, you could put this so that the cat actually has the paw over top of the sign, which is pretty much a cat thing, right? We all, if you have a cat, you kind of know how quirky they can be. And, um, and they're just the cutest things to do um, little critter cards with. So I'm just gonna put that red circle right back in the middle of there because like I said, when I punched out this using the circle punch, this little white sentiment, it was a little bit smaller and then there was a gray gap if I didn't pop that red uh, circle back in there. So here is this part right now. And now the last thing I'm going to show you that someone else taught me in class. Now I have my little hearts right here. They're on here flat, which is cute, but somebody decided that if they use dimensionals, now these are the minis and I need to get these on the back. So let's see if I can do this while on camera. So somebody decided that it would be really cute to pop these hearts up on dimensionals. And then as soon as somebody else did that, we were all like, oh my gosh, that is the cutest thing ever. So uh, I encourage you, if you're using this, a lot of, a lot of um, stamping friends out there were like, oh man, I really wanna make this card. I encourage you to change it up however you want. I mean, absolutely. I'm just showing you how I made mine. And I need to bring in my little embellishments here. I chose black embellishments, if I can get figure out how they open. Um, because we have the dark cat and we have the dark planter, everything else is white and red. And I thought the black was very showy. So I really um, thought the black was like perfect kind of embellishment here for this card. And this one stuck to my finger. I have glue on my fingers now because I use the green glue and then I get gluey. And I'm just going to put one right over here, keeping them very similar in nature um, and it kind of a little triangle formation here. When you work with your threes, it's always nicest to the eye if you can create a triangle somewhere on your card. So we've created that little triangle with these uh, little embellishments. So how cute is this card? Oh my gosh. I just love this card so much. I'm glad that all of you love this card as much as I do. All right, so there we go. That is my card. Let me come over and check out. I'm going to move my mouse. Um, I want to see messages. How are you guys doing? Hi, Kathy. Kathy, thank you so much. Debbie, thank you. Rhonda, Mary. Oh, you guys are awesome. I'm seeing some new faces here. I'm so excited. Debbie likes red rubber. Yes, the red rubber does ink better. You are so right, Debbie, and that's why I love it. Um, the photopolymer can be kind of um, opaque -y 
and it doesn't really always work the nicest. Dimensionals are perfect too. <gasps> Thank you guys for joining me. I'm so glad that I had new friends stamping with me tonight. I hope you enjoyed my presentation of this card and um, please feel free to come back any Monday at eight o'clock. I am here normally, like I said earlier, if you missed the beginning, I'm normally here on a Monday night at eight o'clock and I'm actually doing three different cards um, and it's about an hour long. So I know it can be long for, for some people, but there's other people that just love the company and the chatter that we have going on. Rhonda's got the give it a rolled eyes. <gasps> Rhonda, you have to use them. They're amazing. I did some really, really awesome cards last summer with them. I'll have to dig them out. Um, but yeah, so thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you joining me. Um, I hope that I see some more of these cat cards um, on Pinterest, on Facebook. Um, and make sure you're sharing some pictures too. I love to see um, your variations. So over on Positive Paper Crafters on Wednesday, I am going to do a color swap. And I haven't made my color swap card yet, but I may even change the cat to something else. So if you're not in Positive Paper Crafters and you're interested, it is a private group. Um, it's, a, it's a small group of crafty stampers, and it's a place, again, where you can share your creative projects. Uh, I like to play a lot of games, and we do a poll on Wednesday. We usually do a poll on Saturday, too. Um, so we have a lot of fun over there, too. So that is so awesome. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate your time. If you have any questions, you can leave them. I'll check all the comments later. Come back and see me next Monday. And until next time, stay inspired, create something beautiful, and share the love. Bye, everybody.